Hey everybody, it's Retro DM Ray. Hey, I'm glad to be back with you on the channel today. Um, we are going to continue our conversation of comparing and contrasting first edition AD&D versus uh, second edition AD&D. Um, again, second edition is the one that I played the longest, um, but I do love first edition. Um, and uh, so we're going to take a look at the ability scores, continuing that today. Um, now, uh, first of all, let me get the junk out of the way. Um, if I can, um, please like, um, subscribe. If you're on the fence, come on over. We're talking about good old school stuff here. Um, and uh, share with those that you know in the gaming community, again, that are interested in uh, good old school stuff and taking a look at this stuff from the blast from the past. Um, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I've been gaming for um, over 40 years now, um, and so I might have a little bit of something to say um, about the game, um, and hope that that something is is something that you'd like to hear more about. Um, so um, we're going to talk today and compare uh, the ability scores. Um, right now, we're going to focus on dexterity. I may ha I may do another one here in a minute. Um, right now, we're going to focus on dexterity. Now. Uh, on the screen for you here, you'll see uh, the old uh, goldenrod colored um, first edition character sheets, and you'll notice that on the ability scores there, um, they go in relation to the more elegant strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, and charisma. Um, and that's simply because uh, that's something that I was very much used to. Uh, we used to buy these goldenrod sheets here um, by the books. Um, and uh, and use a razor blade to uh, carefully remove them um, and put your cherished character on there um, and then of course by the time you played it for a while if, if it if it died and you remade it you'd use the same sheets over and over and you'd have all kinds of smear marks and erasure marks all over the things um, and if not you had that that character sheet to put in a slip uh, a slip case of some kind and keep with you and those were just really really cool old nostalgic sheets um, uh, second edition uh, came along, and when they did, and it made an adjustment to AD and D in second edition. Why the uh, the character sheets then uh, flipped the ability scores into what we have today. Um, the character ability scores are uh, strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So either way you like that is fine. Um, I just like these old sheets. All right. So you'll see here next, um, real quickly, you're going to see um, the table from uh, second edition for dexterity and then you're going to see the table for first edition for dexterity and what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to read um, the first edition um, dexterity entry first and read that all through and then I'm going to go back and take a look at the second edition dexterity entry and read through that and then we'll see if we can uh, poke out some differences here all right so um, the first one, um, you saw the table, so I won't read through that. Um, but there are notes regarding the dexterity table, and this is on the bottom of page 11 of the first edition player's handbook. A uh, first uh, entry is reaction slash attacking adjustment. This is the penalty or bonus for both surprise situations and missile combat attacks. The next defensive adjustment refers to the penalty or bonus applicable to a character's saving throws against certain forms of attack, such as fireball, lightning bolts, etc., due to dodging ability. It also applies to the character's parrying and or dodging ability in missile or melee combat. In this case, the penalty subtracts from the armor class of the character, making him or her easier to hit, while the bonus adds to the defensive value of the character's armor class, making him or her harder to hit. For example, a character with plate mail and shield is normally treated as armor class 2. If the character has a 3 dexterity, there's a plus 4 penalty, so the armor class changes to 6. 2 plus 4. <clears throat> However, if the same character has a dexterity of 18, there's a bonus of minus 4, so armor class changes from 2 to a negative 2. 2 plus a negative 4 equals 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Um, then on the next page, on top of page 12, we have adjustments for thieves. Um, this is the uh, penalty or bonus uh, for your different thieving abilities that are based upon dexterity, um, ranging from scores 9 through 18, um, picking pockets, opening locks, locating and removing traps, moving silent, and hiding in shadows. Um, all the penalty or bonus for categories are fully detailed under character classes thieves. 
The penalties and bonuses are applied to the base chances of success for each named category. Racial adjustments for dwarves, elves, etc. are additional pluses. Okay, um, so right off the bat, I can tell you what I like about that is um, that your adjustments, um, penalties, or bonuses based on your dexterity score for thieves was right here with the dexterity entry. Okay, um, now let's go to second edition. Dexterity, dex, encompasses several physical attributes including hand-eye coordination, agility, reaction speed, reflexes, and balance. Dexterity affects a character's reaction to a threat or surprise, his accuracy with thrown weapons and bows, and his ability to dodge an enemy's blows. It is the prime requisite of rogues, I really don't like that word, um, <clears throat> and affects their professional skills. A rogue with a dexterity score of 16 or higher gains a 10% bonus to the experience points he earns. Reaction adjustment modifies the die roll to see if a character is surprised when he unexpectedly encounters NPCs. The more positive the modifier, the less likely the character is to be surprised. Okay, already, um, again, I said I don't like that word rogue, um, and I don't. Um, I like a thief. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with saying thief. Um, uh, rogue implies Han Solo, and not everyone plays Han Solo um, as a thief. Um, and not that I dislike Han Solo at all, um, but not everyone wants to play Han Solo every time they play a thief. Okay? Um, and then, um, reaction adjustment modifying to see if the character is surprised when they unexpectedly encounter NPCs. Okay? Um, that stands for non-player characters. Um, that doesn't say anything about monsters. Okay? Um, so I'm not sure I like that they just put NPCs there. And it says missile attack adjustment is used to modify a character's die roll whenever he uses a missile weapon, a bow, or a thrown weapon. A positive number makes it easier for the character to hit with a missile, while a negative number makes it harder. Okay? Uh, what I don't like about that one is, above in the description and here under missile attack adjustment, it simply is for bows and thrown weapons. Um, I think, um, in my personal opinion, um, shooting a crossbow is just as applicable for dexterity um, and that hand-eye coordination as uh, a bow is. Um, and since dexterity encompasses hand-eye coordination, according to this description, we always gave it to crossbow shooters just as much as we did bow or people who threw a weapon, whether it was improvised or not. <coughs> Excuse me. Defensive adjustment applies to a character's saving throws. See glossary against attacks that can be dodged, lightning bolts, boulders, etc. It also modifies the character's armor class, C Glossary, representing his ability to dodge normal missiles and parry weapon thrusts. For example, Wrath is wearing chainmail, giving him an armor class of 5. If his dexterity score is 16, his armor class is modified by minus 2 to 3, making him harder to hit. If his dexterity score is 5, his armor class is modified by plus 2 to a 7, making him easier to hit. In some situations, beneficial dexterity modifiers to armor class do not apply. Usually this occurs when a character is attacked from behind, or when his movement is restricted, attacked while prone, tied up on a, on a ledge, or climbing a rope, etc. Okay, um, So there's a bit more descriptive information there than is in the first edition player's handbook. Um, you could have gotten most of that extra descriptive uh, thought processes either on your own in first edition um, or from really good Dragon Magazine articles or especially from the DMG. Um, but they just brought it all and kind of collected it all here and kind of reworded it slightly. Um, so that part I don't have much of a problem with. Um, please put in the comments if there's anything in that um, that also bothers you and uh, if you are or are not bothered by the term rogue. Um, that's just, that's a softening of a word and change that I don't really, I guess the old word would be, I don't really cotton to that um, if you want to use that really old term. Okay. All right. Well, that was a lot quicker than I anticipated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to Constitution. Um and so um, I will throw up pictures here first of the um, first edition player's handbook uh, from page 12, the Constitution table. Um, and one of the first things that you immediately are going to notice on the Constitution table uh, for first edition and then second edition, um, which is this one here, um, 
what you're going to see on this first edition table is uh, starting with um, the ability score five in Constitution, um, it says here or lower the character can only be an illusionist. So here's the restriction. Um, and this is this is kind of where it begins. Um, you were restricted in first edition based upon the choices you could make for the race that you chose to play. Yes, I use that word and I don't have a problem with that. Um, and also the uh, scores that you had restricted whether or not you could play something. And if you played it, how high you could achieve in level based again upon those stats. Um, again, I have no problems with that whatsoever. Um, I think that was elegant. Um, I think that was a way of game balance, quote unquote. Um, if you want to use that term for first and second edition um, AD&D, um, I would use that term. Um, Gary used that term in one of his articles in Strategic Review. Um, I, I think that's about the end of the idea of balance in this system at all. Um, with the exception of uh, just being a, a a kinder and gentler dungeon master as far as what you throw at your party, um, and then uh, being a uh, a wise dungeon master in the treasures that you hand out. Okay, but again, those are my opinions. Okay, um, so I won't go through the entire table, um, but I will suffice to say that once you hit seventeen and eighteen, um, the numbers from 16, which is a plus two hit point adjustment, remain the same unless this asterisk applies to you, only to fighters. All other classes are given the maximum hit point bonus adjustment for constitution of plus two. So here's what it says on notes regarding this constitution table. So first of all, um, I'll read the entry for it. Constitution is a term which encompasses the character's physique, fitness, health, and resistance. Since Constitution affects the character's hit dice and chances of surviving such great system shocks as being changed by a magical spell or resurrected from the dead, it is of considerable importance to all classes. Constitution scores of above a certain number are necessary for becoming certain subclasses of characters. Effects of Constitution are given on the table below. It is of utmost importance to understand that a character's initial Constitution score is also, the maximum number of times the character can be raised from the dead resurrected, and that each such revivication reduces the character's constitution score by one. Although a character's constitution can be restored to its former score or even raised above this number by magical means, this is no way alters this in no way, sorry, alters the initial score limitation. Nor does such magical change in constitution restore to the character additional chances for revivification. Thus, if a character has an initial constitution of 15, he or she can never be brought back to life by a raised dead or resurrection spell more often than 15 times. Note that a rod of resurrection is considered the same as a spell of the same sort. The 16th death is final and irrevocable without use of some other magical means such as wish. Okay, um... That's that's very important to pay attention to that right there. We're going to move on to hit point adjustment, and I'll come back around to that in a little while. Hit point adjustment indicates the subtraction from or addition to each hit die for a character. Hit dice are fully explained under the appropriate heading. Note that subtraction can never reduce any hit die below 1, i.e. if 1 is rolled and a 1 comes up, or if a 2 is rolled and the penalty due to constitution is minus 2, the die is read as 1 hit point regardless of subtractions. Note also that the only class of characters which is entitled to bonuses above plus 2 per hit die is fighters, including the fighter subclasses paladins and rangers. So they add a little bit of clarification after the asterisk below the table. <clears throat> Thus, even though a cleric, magic user, or thief has a constitution of 17 or 18, the additional hit points for each hit die due to superior constitution is plus 2. System Shock Survival states the percentage chance the character has of surviving the following forms of magical attacks or simple application of the magic. Aging, petrification, including flesh to stone spell, polymorph any object, polymorph others. For example, the wizard... The Wicked Necromancer polymorphs others, his hireling, into a giant rock. With the rather foolish agreement of the change E, the hireling must make a saving throw based on his constitution score using the table above. Assuming he survives, a further saving throw would have to be made if he was again polymorphed or dispelled back to original form. 
The saving throw must be equal to or less than the percentage shown. Resurrection Survival shows the percentage chance the character has of being successfully raised from the dead or resurrected by a cleric. The score of the percentile dice must be equal to or less than the number shown on the table or the character fails to be revivified and is completely and totally dead forever. Remember that a character can never be raised from the dead or resurrected a total number of times in excess of the character's initial constitution score. So it's important for you as the dungeon master um, or on the earnestness of your players to um, ascertain what the original constitution score was from the character um, after final character creation process is completed. So that, should that change over time, um, going up or down, that, w that number of times is originally generated is all that you can be resurrected um, or raised dead. Okay, Constitution according to second edition. So you see the table here, um, and uh, it does indicate something extra on the table there, two something extras actually, which is uh, poison save adjustment and regeneration. And notice also that the tables in second edition go up to 25. Um, there's an old channel out there, I don't remember his name, I think it's Dr. Pat maybe, um, that says that this was the beginning of power creep into the game. Um, I would agree with that, but it didn't make a significant impact on our games necessarily. Um, but I do, I do tend to agree that, that you can see that here. Um, I think also um, it was included here. Um, simply from the standpoint of it was in other books anyway um, deities and demigods I believe legends and lore I believe um, when they redid that um, so you could have found it out either way uh, they just put it here in the player's handbook for easier reference um, so you know take that for what it is um, but here's constitution score from a second edition a character's constitution score or con score encompasses his physique fitness health and physical resistance to hardship injury and disease since this ability affects the character's hit points and chances of surviving such tremendous shocks as being physically reshaped by magic or resurrected from death, it is vitally important to all classes. Some classes have minimum allowable constitution scores. A character's initial constitution score is the absolute limit to the number of times the character can be raised or resurrected from death. Each such revival reduces the character's constitution score by one. Magic can restore a reduced constitution score to its original value or even higher, but this has no effect on the number of times a character can be revived from death. Okay, so first things first, um, it's the exact same as first edition in regards to the write up here. Um, and there's a little bit of a uh, couple of little points of flavor text added. Um, and then uh, it notes that um, there is uh, something of a difference um, in, in constitution for certain classes. Okay, um, and so uh, it's been moved away from the constitution table and it's been spread out into the classes. Okay, but it's not quite as strict and detailed um, because classes and race combinations um, were not as strictly regimentally enforced uh, for what you could or couldn't be and how high you could be in those. Um, to some extent in second edition versus first edition. But anyway, moving on. So uh, once the character has exhausted his original constitution score for purposes of being revived from death, um, nothing short of divine intervention can bring him back and divine intervention is reserved for only the bravest and most faithful heroes. I do like that. For example, Wrath's constitution score at the start of his adventuring career is 12. He can be rev revived from death 12 times. If he dies a 13th time, he cannot be resurrected or raised. Hit point adjustment is added to or subtracted from each hit die rolled for the character. However, no hit die ever yields less than one point, regardless of the modifications. If an adjustment would lower the number rolled to zero or less, consider the final result to be one. Always use the character's current constitution to determine hit point bonuses and penalties. Only warriors are entitled to a constitution score of bonus of plus three or plus four. Non-warrior characters who have constitution scores of 17 or 18 receive only plus two per die. So um, the class has been renamed from fighter and fighter subclasses to warrior as the, the larger heading where the subclasses are underneath that. Um, take that as you will. I still like fighter, um, but warrior is fine. 
Um, it says the Constitution bonus ends when a character reaches 10th level, 9th for warriors and priests. Neither the Constitution bonus nor hit dice are added to a character's hit points after he has passed this level. See the character class descriptions that start on page 25. If a character's constitution changes during the course of an adventuring, his hit points may be adjusted up or down to reflect the change. The differences between the character's current hit point bonus, if any, and the new bonus is multiplied by the character's level up to 10 and added to or subtracted from the character's total. If Delsonora's constitution increased from 16 to 17, she would gain one hit point for every level she had up to 10th level. System Shock states that the percentage chance a character has to survive magical effects that reshape or age his body, petrification or, and reversing petrification, polymorph, magical aging, etc. It can also be used to see if the character retains consciousness in particularly difficult situations. For example, an evil mage polymorphs his dim-witted hireling into a crow. The hireling, whose constitution score is 13, has an 85% chance to survive the change. Assuming he survives, he must successfully roll for system shock again when he's changed back to his original form, or else he will die. Resurrection Survival lists a character's percentage chance to be successfully resurrected or raised from death by magic. The player must roll the listed number or less on percentile dice for the character to be revived. If the dice roll fails, the character is dead, regardless of how many times he has previously been revived. Only divine intervention can bring such a character back again. Poison save. This modifies the saving throw versus poison for humans, elves, gnomes, and half-elves. Dwarves and halflings do not use this adjustment since they have special resistances to poison attacks. The DM has specific information on saving throws. Regeneration enables those with specially endowed constitutions, perhaps by a wish or a magical item, to heal at an advanced rate, regenerating damage taken. The character heals one point of damage after the passage of the listed number of turns. However, fire and acid, which are more extensive than normal wounds, cannot be regenerated in this manner. These injuries must heal normally or be dealt with by magical means. Okay? Um, so that's the, that's the readings of the two uh, ability scores there. Um, uh, personally, I like the fact that the Constitution table in the first edition uh, player's handbook um, includes it right there on the table for you as to what you can be um, so that you don't have to, once you get your ability score set, then you have to flip through and decide what it is you can actually choose from to be um, based upon your stats or your ability scores that you rolled. Again, that's just my personal preference um, for ease of reference. Um, and you will notice also um, that there is a, uh, a slight bit of an enhancement, um, although not much, in terms of the numbers themselves. Um, again, poison save, um, even if you were a dwarf or a halfling, um, we always played and gave them a poison save adjustment if they had a 19 con, as well as what they got for their dwarf or halfling um, race adjustment. Um, because how often do you get a 19 constitution when you're playing a and d 2nd edition? I mean, honestly, that one, in, that one extra poison save adjustment means little of nothing. Um, by the time you earned that 19 con um, later on down the line, uh, you, you for whatever magical means or whatever that you might have received it from, um, that one was negligible as an adjustment is concerned. Um, other than that, um, that's going to be my coverage for today. Um, I think I'm going to save the Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma ability scores for the next time, and we will talk about those. Um, but if you have any comments, um, please uh, let's start a discussion about these things. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what uh, what you think about stuff on the channel, if you want to, um, all that kind of stuff. Again, this is totally G-rated and family-friendly, so, you know, don't get crazy as you normally don't do, um, and I won't have to delete those, um, and I really appreciate that. Um, again, thanks for tuning in today, and I hope you've enjoyed what you've heard. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did. Um, please uh, sub if you haven't yet, um, and please share with all of your gaming friends. Now, so we continue to talk about this stuff and I can continue to put stuff on the channel. 
Um, if you'd like to, there are ways in the description of the video to support my channel. Um, right now I am simply using my phone and my phone microphone, as you can probably tell, um, because I do not have the funds to purchase a nicer uh, piece of equipment for that. And uh, I do all my editing on my phone as well. Um, so uh, I don't have the ability to purchase um, good editing software or a PC to do that with. Um, and so those are ways you could support the channel to keep the videos coming and to uh, to certainly maybe uh, increase a little bit of that frequency um, since it does take up phone room for me to be able to accomplish these things. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why they're spread out. That and, of course, uh, the busyness in my life with kids and my wife and, and ministry and, and all that stuff that I do. So uh, as Gygax always said, as I like to say on my channel, um, prosper, good gaming, and enjoy your gaming and your groups, whatever you do. I um, hope you're getting in some good, uh, good, good old school gaming and have a good time with that. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Later.